Hey everyone, Wayne Fox here. Got a few Macs, huh? I think there's a few more down in my basement. Uh, the oldest one I still have is this Macintosh Classic from about 92, I think. And the other day I was doing a video comparing my new M3 MacBook Pro, the, the Max model, to my previous computer and actually the previous uh, M1 Max as well, and to my 2019 Mac Pro, which has kind of become my standard in all my tests. Now these tests are using Lightroom and Photoshop, so specifically photographer oriented. And I got thinking, you know, I've been doing these tests and I've done them on about 13 or 14 Macs, back to the earliest one being the 2013 Mac Pro that I still have. So I thought, heck, I should look up and just compare where we're at now as far as these tests to where we were back then. Now this actually was faster than this one here. This is the 2015 MacBook Pro. Won't even start up anymore. Battery is completely gone. But I was a little surprised at the results. So I thought, you know, I should make a quick video. Only thing about this video is it's, it's interesting. It's kind of maybe not shocking because we know computer technology has just come a long way since then. But it's still kind of remarkable where we're at as far as doing things in Lightroom and Photoshop where we, to compare to where we were. And considering where we were back in these days, it's totally mind-blowing. Okay, let's get started. In this first screen, I'm just going to give the specs of the six different Macs that are being used in this test. I'm not going to go into much detail. If you want to pause the video and look at any of the specs, what I will mention is these are not usually the very, very top of the line. Obviously, this is, was a $7,500 Mac Pro, and I think this thing topped out at forty dollars or $50,000. Same with this one here. I think you could buy a 12-core version for like $2,000 more. This is the 6-core version. Most of the MacBook Pros are one step under the top, so maybe a slightly not quite as good of graphics card and normally 0.1 gigahertz in clock speed. You know, that 0.1 gigahertz just wasn't worth the five or $600 extra fee. So they're all pretty high. They're almost like second from the best you could buy. Uh, just to give you a perspective on that. Okay, so let's get on with the test. First test is to import 500 Sony A7R4 files. Now I will mention the Sony a7R4 wasn't around when this, these couple older computers were here, but these tests weren't actually done until around 2018, 2019 when I started doing all these tests. And I just happened to have the old computers still available to me. As we can see, this got improved quite a bit, but not it's not super substantial. I did previews set to sidecar and embedded because what's happening is we're just telling the operating system to copy them from one place to another. This is just identical if we just went to the Finder or the Explorer and drug them over. It's just giving a command to the operating system. So at this point, we're just testing the operating system and the hardware. So the speed improvements we see here are probably mostly due to just faster SSDs. Now these files are located on an external SSD and they're moved to the internal SSD where Lightroom is. And that external SSD, I'm guessing, as you can see, uh, at this point, we're almost identical. The last three M series Macs, as well as the Mac Pro, I'll do this in right around 30 seconds. I'm pretty sure what I've done is hit the speed of the external SSD. That's just as fast as they can pump them out. Now, this is not very indicative of a field import from your SD card, they're going to be a lot slower. They are relative to each other, the same thing. So I would think that an SD card, we're going to probably be the SD card will be the limit of any import. Uh, and at this point, there's not a lot you can do about that. They are getting a little faster, but I think we're kind of hitting a limit there. Okay, so in test two, we're going to push Lightroom quite a bit. We're going to ask it to make a one-to-one -one preview of all those files. I always do this because I want to be able to go to the library and be able to check focus at one to one and not wait for it to build this preview. It doesn't do any good in the develop module. It has to make its own previews. These are not used in the develop module. It's if you're not checking focus except for a few, then it might not be a step you do. And that's why I don't do it in import. And as you can see, this pushes the computer uh, quite a bit more. You'll notice that the 2013 MacBook Pro really isn't surpassed, or the 2013 Mac Pro 
isn't surpassed until we get to about the 2018 MacBook Pro. I've actually run this on a 2016 and 2017, I believe, one of the two. And 2018 is about when we were equaling the power of this computer here with the portables. So five years, it took five years, but that's still pretty substantial. But now you'll notice how dramatically it's changed, especially as far as a portable. The current M3 Max MacBook Pro can do this in under four minutes, a process which took with this 2015 Mac Pro 20 minutes. That's one fifth of the time. Now that's pretty substantial. All of the current MacBook Pros, MacBook Airs, all of those are going to do this substantially faster. Maybe not as fast as the M3 Max, but just the whole operating system as well as the M series of processors, the ARM technology has really made a dramatic difference. And I don't want to, I want to make sure that you understand I'm not singling out Macs as being more powerful than Intel. They have improved dramatically as well. I've never done tests on those. And of course, now Intel is finally, they're beginning to move, uh, well, I should say Intel Windows is beginning to move to ARM. And I think you'll see the ARM slash RISC processors uh, utilized much more extensively and it's gonna make uh, the computing power just way better for everybody. So the next test is we're gonna export all of those files, but we're not gonna do any modification to them. So basically we're gonna get a JPEG that's equal to the original capture and the metadata that was attached to that original capture. Now obviously Lightroom has to do some rendering here. We're gonna ask it to JPEG them to a 60 uh, compression. We're gonna resize it to 4,000 pixels on the long side. And the data is pretty obvious. Again, we can see that the 2018 Mac Pro, MacBook Pro, it took until then for it to surpass the 2013 Mac Pro. But look at the difference now. The Even the Intel machine, how much faster it was. But now we're down to a process that was 17 minutes uh, with the 2015 MacBook Pro, and we're now down to a minute and 15 or so seconds with the current M3 Max MacBook Pro. I mean, just pretty staggering. Now, I will mention that my M3 Max MacBook Pro is not the fastest Mac you can buy because you can buy an Ultra uh, Studio, uh, Mac Studio with an Ultra, or I believe you can get the uh, Mac Pro with an Ultra, but it's certainly one of the fastest portals around. And when you see this kind of power, unless you're doing some serious video work and a lot of rendering, uh, maybe 3D rendering or other things like that, uh, for photographers, there's really no reason to buy a desktop Mac anymore because this MacBook Pro, I'm running three monitors on it. I'm getting this kind of speed. It, it's actually pretty amazing. And what's cool is when I travel, I still have that, all that speed. So in test four, we're going to export all those files again, but this time I've added some changes to them. There's been some global changes in the develop module. I think there's nine or 10 dust spots have been made. I've added a couple of graduated filters. So now Lightroom has got to render those changes, which are a lot more complicated than simply rendering out the file. And as you can see, what took 40 minutes with my 2015 MacBook Pro, I can now do in five minutes. Now that's about one one eighth of the time. I mean, this is pretty dramatic. If you're doing a lot of file exporting, you're a wedding photographer or a sports photographer, uh, <laughs> the world has changed dramatically in the last seven or eight years. Now notice that in the last three models, we've been pretty good, but we're even twice as fast as the first 16 inch MacBook Pro that came out in 2019 as well. So in test five, we take advantage of Lightroom's panorama batch mode. I have five panoramas. They're all taken with a IQ 180, which is an 80 megapixel back, and they vary from six to 12 shots for each. You'll notice that the 2015 Mac Pro was 16 minutes was pretty slow. Once we got the 2018, we were beating the original 2013 Mac Pro, but now we're down to three minutes and 41 seconds. That's down from around 16 minutes back in 2015. And it's substantially faster than even the 2019 Mac Pro. So we've seen some nice moves in this as well. So in the last test, I use a benchmark called Puget Bench, which is made by a company called Puget Systems. They create a high-end workstation specifically for Photoshop in mind. They do this only with Windows, obviously, but they're a really solid company and their hardware is pretty, pretty impressive. And this benchmark has been really useful for me over the years. I've stayed with the 0.8 beta just because with the M series of Mac, some of their newer benchmarks had some problems. And basically this is how much time it takes to run this series of tests. I think they have 15 different actions or 20 different actions they perform on a file and 
and then they repeat it three times and average them out. And you can see that we were back at 34 to 37 minutes back in 2015, 2013. And even the 2019 Mac Pro took around 30, 31 minutes, not substantially faster. But with the new M3 Max MacBook Pro, Photoshop finally has seen some serious improvements. We're down to 17 minutes and 27 seconds, which is about almost half of the time it took the Mac Pro. Photoshop is definitely seems more responsive to me on these machines. And I'll admit with all the power that they put into Lightroom, especially with some of its ability to, you know, fix things, which used to be you'd have to go to Photoshop for, uh, you know, content aware fill and stuff. I don't use Photoshop much anymore, but the purpose of the video is to talk really about where we were compared to where we are. And that to me is pretty amazing. I mean, in the last eight or nine years, we've increased the power of our computers in a magnitude of four to eight times, depending on the task. There are probably many tasks out there where it's even stronger than that that are maybe not photography related. It's no wonder because even the, the Windows Intel our uh, arm side are seeing these same kind of improvements in speed. So it's no wonder that we can build these massive server farms that can do the stuff that we're seeing with AI right now. And it's even gonna get better. The, the technology's there and all these developers and companies behind this are really starting to take advantage of the incredible technology gain that we've come. If you compare that to where we were back when the original Mac came out, um, you know, like I said, my iPhone's probably got two or 300 or maybe two or 3,000 times the computing power of the original 128 Mac. And those CPM computers I built, uh, you know, wow, I don't know where we're at with those, but you know, they had eight, eight uh, kilobytes of RAM or some stupid thing like that. Uh, in the last 40 to 50 years, computing power has just been amazing. And a lot of the things we're seeing in the world is due to that. I just saw an article about a new possible antibiotic that was developed using AI, which they think will tackle some of these germs that up to now have been not responsive to antibiotics. And you think about that, suddenly it's affecting medicine, it's affecting space travel, everything we design uh, because of what we can put. We put all the human knowledge into this neural engine and then out spits this stuff that humans could do in millions of years, maybe. Anyway, it's been a fun video to make. Hope you enjoyed it. I am gonna do another video about my journey through the computing world, starting with my original computer, which was a Atari 400, and a little programming involved in there, built a point of sale system. I'll have that out. Might be interested in that. It's uh, kind of fun, mainly making it for my kids. Anyway, hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks, see ya.